So some of you, and when you're doing green screen work, some of your videos, I realize this, may actually have multiple clips where you want to do um, green screen work with, with um, uh, in multiple shots, but maybe not in the whole video. So um, a good example is, is this. This is Harry Potter, right? Um, and there's a section here where um, one person uh, wants to do uh, uh, some green screen work with this little section here where they're in uh, where the where Harry's invisible remember that and he's beating up people okay with the snowball and stuff like that It'd be kind of funny so anyway there's a lot of shots that need green screen here but a lot of shots that don't and the shots that do are short and so are the shots that don't so rather than load the entire video into um, uh, after effects and have this really long composition it's probably a lot easier to do it in separate little comps so here's what uh, I think you should do if this is you so the first thing you do is open up Adobe Premiere so I know I told some of you or I told the class you didn't need to go to Premiere but there's actually a really easy way of working back and forth from Premiere to After Effects Adobe calls it the dynamic link and it's actually really really easy so I'm gonna start a new project here and I'll just call this a uh, green screen and uh, yeah I totally hit the caps key or the shift key wrong there Okay, and uh, no, I don't want to put it in with the PSA. So you go ahead and you put it in there with your, um, uh, with your clips. Okay, click OK. Uh, I'm going to use the media browser to uh, go in and find the clip really quickly here. Go to my digital filmmaking green screen clips. Okay, so there's, there's, there's the video. So what I can do is I can drop that down into the timeline. It's going to create a sequence for me and now I can trim it I can trim it just to what I want so first off a lot of this stuff in the beginning isn't needed okay so we can eliminate a lot of that um, although for this for the purpose of the story it might be fun to start right around here right mute the audio so nothing's going there and then here we don't need any of this ending either so we can stop right around here. Now, what all you got to do, and I'm just going to do this to a couple so that you don't have a, a, a problem. So the first thing that you're going to do is before you start uh, uh, bringing it into After Effects, you want to start cutting uh, it into separate clips. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to move forward using the arrow keys. Okay, I'm going to move forward here until I hit the first frame of the new clip. So you see that? Just use the arrow keys. Then I'm going to go over here. There's this cool tool. It looks like a little razor blade and it literally is called the razor tool. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click it. Now when you play the video it will play exactly the way that it normally does but you now have the start of a new clip. So I'll go to the end of that clip. Okay. And here come the bad guys. Go back frame by frame, get to the first frame of the new clip, grab the razor blade tool, and cut. And then I can go forward. And then I can get to the new one and cut again. And you can kind of see the, the basic principle. I'm just going to do three here just so that you get the idea. So do, 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 and there. Now what I can do to, let's say, take separate clips let's say this is one of the clips that I want to edit in After Effects I can click on that clip now that it's a separate entity and I can right click and I can say replace with After Effects composition so what we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that and fire that into uh, an After Effects composition and you'll notice what will end up happening is then the composition will be only the time that I needed it to be so let's um, open this up and now it wants to it wants me to uh, to save this so I'll go put it on the C drive find my folder digital filmmaking find the green screen and I'll just call this green screen and I'll say comps and what's cool is you can have multiple compositions in a single project file and that's the real key to this that's really kinda neat so I'll hit save and just helps organization 
And you can see here is over here, it started my video and it has a green screen comp and uh, number one. And what I can do is I can rename this and it might not be a bad idea to do that, but it doesn't really matter. Um, let's just, for the sake of argument, I'm going to take the video and I'm going to turn it upside down. Okay, now I'll save and I'm going to go back into Adobe Premiere and you can see immediately the video has updated and changed to what it was in uh, After Effects. Now one major issue is that the video is now red up here in the timeline and that means unless you've got a pretty awesome graphics card you're going to need to render it to play it at full uh, 30 frames per second. Now the truth or 24 frames per second or whatever. The truth of the matter is um, we have pretty good graphics cards in here so it probably will play at 30 frames per second okay at a good clip. So anyway now let's just take and let's say this one I'm not going to do and then this one I do want to do so let me just cut this clip out here really quickly too and so I'm going to do a green screen on this clip here and boom go to the razor blade tool and it make sure snapping is on by the way I forgot about that snapping is this little magnetic tool and that way the blade tool will snap to the playhead if you don't do that you'll be cutting anywhere so then I can take this clip, right click, whoops, select it, right click, and replace with After Effects Composition. Now here's another really cool thing, and this is really the last thing. Notice that now After Effects is kind of glowing here. What's really cool is it brought the new clip and the new comp into the same project file because I left it open. If I had closed Adobe uh, After Effects, it would have started a new project file. You probably don't want that, especially if you've got a half a dozen of these things to do, maybe more. It's better for you to actually um, have all the comps in the same project file. And so now all I need to do is if I want to edit one, I can just click them and they're in tabs right down here on the timeline, which is pretty sweet, okay? Or you just go to the comp and you double click. I highly recommend renaming them, okay, uh, so you can rename them. If you've got a bunch, especially instead of like Compo 2, Compo 1, whatever, it probably would help you to rename. The other thing that might help you a lot is to also go in order. Just start with the first one and go. In fact, all I have to do now is I might not even have my green screen video shot, but I might just go forward, get all the clips that I want, bring them all into After Effects as comps, get them set up and then bring in my green screen video and drop them down in each composition. You could totally do that um, and that would probably work. If you're doing it this way, the other thing that you could do is you could drag your green screen clips in on top of here, highlight both of them, right click and bring them into After Effects that way and then they'll be together in the comp immediately in two separate layers, which is pretty cool too. Um, so I do, I, you know, well let's, so if I just go to, uh, see I have, uh, I have some green, I have green screen video on my desktop, so let's just do that. Um, oh, let, let's do a, here's a, here's a shot of Orlando Bloom from Lord of the Rings. Let's do it, we'll do a little bit of a, uh, we'll do a little bit of a movie mashup here. So there's Orlando Bloom in green screen, okay, and I can just take him and put him above the clip, just like that. Let's just do another one. So I'll just randomly razor blade a couple. Boom, that's gonna be way off, but I'll just show you. So then I can just highlight everything, right click, replace with After Effects composition. And now if I go to After Effects, you can see there's Orlando Bloom on top of the video, you mm -hmm. see? And now I can do green screen, all my green screen work and do my motion tracking and all that sort of stuff. And he's right there already set up in the layers for After Effects. So you can do this any, any number of ways. There's not necessarily a wrong way to bring in video clips to, um, to After Effects. If you're doing one short 50 or 30 second clip, you just start in After Effects. However, if you've got a movie where the camera's cutting away and you've got a couple different shots and you'll be shooting five or four different shots against the green screen, it probably is easier to start in Adobe Premiere, get it all laid out, and then bring it into uh, After Effects like this. And then the dynamic link, as soon as I save it, if I go back to Premiere, you'll notice now that this 
here. Notice that Bl Orlando Bloom is gone out of, the t out of the second track. He's now in the After Effects composition, and it's one file. And then all I have to do, select all, hit enter, and it will render out the video if I need to. I may not need to. It may still play it, you know, 30 frames per second, but it's always good to do that. And once it renders through the video, you can see um, it'll, uh, it's pretty easy here. It actually had to work pretty hard to do the upside down video. That's kind of funny. Um, I'll just hit cancel. You can see now that these are green because they've been rendered and now it will play all the way through. Does that make sense to everybody how that workflow can work? Again, it's the Adobe Dynamic Link. It's really cool. It'll actually serve us with a lot of purpose when we get into soundtrack editing and sound effects and stuff like that. We'll be in another program um, called uh, Audition. There's, there's all sorts of really cool stuff that we can use uh, in, in the Adobe world that help us do stuff like that. Any questions? I didn't think so. Okay, let's get to work.